Hey guys, I'm Hugo and welcome to Advanced Sim Racing. Today we're going to be doing a product showcase on the new Husingvelt MagShift. Uh, so getting into the unboxing, as usual, great packaging from Husingvelt. Uh, we've got a little envelope with some stickers and maybe the assembly guide, I believe. The shifter itself, as you can see, a pretty hefty unit uh, is also pretty heavy. The accessory box, uh, which is gonna have, I assume, USB cable, uh, yep, and some bolts as well as some Allen keys for the adjustment, and also the mounting plate at the bottom here. The Husingbelt MagShift kind of uh, innovates as to what a sequential shifter should be. The big perk that you'll have with it is the amount of adjustability in terms of feel uh, so that you're able to go and get the exact feeling that you're after. Uh, it offers three different things that you can adjust, uh, that being the overall force, so no matter if you're upshifting or downshifting, and you can also adjust the upshift and downshift feel individually. Uh, so say for example, if we're at the stiffest setting uh, for the overall force and the stiffest setting for the upshift and downshift force, we're going to be looking at an actuation force of around 11 kilograms, which is actually quite a lot. It's obviously difficult to display here as it's kind of mounted, not mounted, but yeah, it's difficult to move. There we go. But of course that can be easily adjusted and will be slightly different once it is assembled and ready to go on the rig. It also has uh, three buttons here that you can configure using Husingbelt smart control software. Uh, and it can actually turn out to be 10 different inputs. Uh, so say if you, uh, for a quick click, it would be one input. And if you hold it, it would be another input. Uh, so that makes it very versatile and kind of adds, you know, a button box that is easy to reach, obviously, as you want the shifter to be in an easy to reach position. Then again, so will the buttons be. As the name suggests, uh, the Husingbelt MagShift uses a magnetic uh, shifting system, and so that's what you'll find inside of the casing here. This in turn, as I said earlier, allows for a lot of adjustability, but also allows for a very realistic feel, uh, just like you'd have in a real car with a sequential transmission. The initial force required to engage the, the gear is gonna be greater than the, the, the rest of the travel. So initially, you'll have to push pretty hard on it, and once it goes in, the rest of the travel is gonna be a bit easier. Of course, this can be adjusted. Uh, it is quite a loud shifter. Uh, however, Husingbelt did think of that. So we've got a spring here that adds a little bit of preload to the feel of the shifter. And inside of that spring is a piece of foam uh, to help mitigate the noise. The inside of uh, the shifter, so the shifting mechanism and everything is made of a material that of course uh, has low friction and is going to last a very long time. So Husingbelt did think of reliability just like they always have with all of their products. For electronics, Husingbelt are using two optoelectronic sensors to detect the shifts themselves. Uh, so it's a no contact sensor, which means that it will last a very long time. And we of course have three buttons just here that we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, it plugs in via a USB cable that is of course provided and is going to be operated via Husingbelt smart control software. For mounting, Husingbelt of course provide everything that you're going to need. Uh, starting with the mounting plate it offers quite a lot of adjustment actually. So you'll find the two slots here. This is where uh, you'll have your bolts that pass through and go into the profile itself. Uh, as they are slotted, it'll allow you for some yaw adjustment. You've also got the holes on the side here, which will allow for angle adjustment on the shifter, but also height adjustment. Uh, as you'll see, it's a pretty high unit. However, it is quite narrow and not too long. So it does, it's not gonna take up too much space on your rig and should still leave enough space for something like an H pattern shifter and a handbrake. The Husingvelt MagShift retails at $679.99 CAD and $519.99 USD and that is of course with free shipping and no import duties across Canada and the United States. So mounting the Husingvelt MagShift, as mentioned earlier, we have our mounting plate here, which allows for yaw adjustment as well as some height and angle adjustment. Uh, you'll have the four bolts, two bolts on each side will go into these. I've already taken them off and I've already got the T-nuts in the profile here. Uh, Husingbelt to provide all of the hardware that you're going to need to mount it. So we first mount our bolts uh, here. Uh, good thing to actually, they're, they're not like bolts that you need to use an Allen key with. They actually give you a, um, a wrench uh, that you can use. So even if the shifter is like sitting on top of the bolt, you can still adjust it, yeah. Uh, the yaw angle, so that's pretty neat from Husingbelt, and actually something that I thought would be a bit of an issue, but Husingbelt have, of course, thought of it. 
Rest of it gonna be pretty simple. Uh, I'll put it at the lowest setting for now. Shouldn't be uh, too uncomfortable. And I'll see if I want to adjust it afterwards. Uh, well, we got our cabling because we had a Husingbelt handbrake on there before. So just taking them out for uh, video purposes. Uh, but we're gonna be able to plug it in fairly easily. I mean, that's about as easy as it gets for mounting a, a sim racing accessory. And we'll also get into the adjustment side of things just after that, which is also fairly easy to do. So the mag shift is now mounted. Uh, I'll show you real quick how to do the adjustment, although this is very well explained in the uh, quick start guide that they include with it. Uh, so you'll have two Torx Allen keys um, included with the shifter itself. Uh, you'll need two when, when you're doing the adjustment. You can see the three, the three holes here. So top one is gonna be for the overall force. Uh, so meaning no matter if you're upshifting or downshifting, uh, here is, well, it's gonna be for one side, you could say upshifting or downshifting, but that's gonna depend on how you set it up. But say, this is gonna be downshift, this is gonna be upshift. Uh, so we'll adjust each of them individually. Quite simple to do. Uh, just put the Torx in on each side. We're gonna turn counterclockwise. If I can get that one in here. We're going to turn counterclockwise on each, loosened up, loosened up, and then we just pull this one down to go stiffer and up to go softer. Uh, and these is gonna be towards the outside of the shifter. We're gonna go stiffer towards the inside. We're gonna go softer. So yeah, fairly easy adjustment to make. I've got it set up right now, uh, medium setting for both of the upshift and downshift and stiffest setting for the uh, for the overall force, which feels really good. Uh, it's quite loud, but again, loud, thunky noise, kind of satisfying actually. So it feels pretty good to me, but it's of course gonna be a subjective thing and will depend on exactly the feeling that you're after. So now that we've got the mag shift plugged in, uh, all we need to do, just download smart control, which we've already got done. Uh, and then as I said, plug it in, it's gonna detect it right away. And you're then gonna be greeted uh, with a profile directly in uh, the smart control software. You can do quite a lot of things with it, uh, as I said earlier, you can set up some different buttons. So uh, say we've got the three buttons on here, we could set up one uh, if you want it, just one press, really easy. Uh, but you could also put, for example, a secondary output. Uh, so it does and if still pressed, um, we're gonna hold it here and this could be another input. So say we do button 10 and then if I press it once, it's gonna engage just the primary input uh, output. If I hold it, it's gonna do the secondary output. Uh, so then again, technically it gives you about six different inputs that you can do using these three buttons. I'd suggest probably just binding them to whatever car settings you'd like to have if you don't already have an external button box and then probably using one of these outputs to actually change which profile uh, you're using. So choosing Belt have given us a couple of things that we could do with it. For example, uh, you know, a quick press could be for your lights, and if you hold it, it would be for your wipers. Uh, it could be, for example, you can also do this with the upshift and downshift. So say if I push and hold the downshift, it would go into neutral automatically. So that's another thing that you can do with it. But as I said, just play around with it. There's so many different options and I'm sure you guys will figure out some stuff that we haven't even thought about. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very versatile product, sequential shifter, kind of MIDI button box in there as well. So I have no doubt that you guys will absolutely love it. And we certainly do.